What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? How are you? This video is submitted by subscriber slash supporter Nocturnal Shutterbug 1179. And I saw this and I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to react to this because I have been on the record saying, especially when I do LeBron James content, I have to put respect on Kevin Love's name because people treat this guy like he was some type of scrub, like he wasn't as good as what he was. They're now saying that Cavaliers team with him, Kyrie and Love was in a super team because for some reason they have forgotten or uh, purposely forgotten uh slapping you with revisionist history hoping you won't fact check him and act like kevin love wasn't a perennial superstar he was he was kevin love sacrificed his prime right when he was butting into his prime as a prolific player he sacrificed it to go play with lebron james on a super team and when he went to the cavaliers he was supposed to be the second option he was the clear cut second best player on the team. Kyrie Irving was not on Kevin Love's level. And somehow, some way, probably because Kyrie Irving has the ball in his hand, if not that first year, by that second year, Kevin Love had became the third option. But make no mistake about it, Kyrie Irving as a complete all-around basketball player, as a basketball player, forget that, as a basketball player, was not on Kevin Love's level. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't go there. Kevin Love was a monster. I, whatever, you can talk about how they never made the playoffs in the, with the Timberwolves and that stacked Western Conference at the time when he didn't have a great team around him. You can say what you want to say. But the dude was a monster and a skilled basketball player. In my time, one of the best rebounders I had ever seen. I'm talking about in my time. I'm not saying that he's a top three rebounder ever or anything like that. I'm saying in my time, he was one of the best rebounders I've ever seen, if not the best rebounder I've ever seen, especially considering the guy's size and lack of athleticism you know, for going up and grabbing rebounds. Kevin Love was phenomenal. There was a season where he averaged over 15 rebounds per game. He had an amazing ability to box out and uh, predict where the ball was going. You see, people often remember Kevin Love like the slimmer version, but Kevin Love used to be a big boy, like a girthy, bulky, heavy, wide body, kind of Charles Barkley-ish. But that helped him, you know, that, that size, that weight helped him body people and get himself in a position for rebounding. Like, he was phenomenal. And that's, like, I think Kevin Love at his largest body mass, and I might be wrong here, but was might have been in high school. And I say, I was in college when Kevin Love was in high school. And my boy, my homeboy would always tell me about this dude, Kevin Love. He's like, dude, you got to look out for this guy, Kevin Love. He's coming. He's like, he's a big boy, but he could dribble. He could play point guard. He's averaging like these astronomical numbers. I think he might have said something close to like a, I, I don't know, 25, 25 and like eight or something like that in high school. And then I, I saw some video footage. And I was like, this guy is a monster. Sure enough, went to college, ended up making it to the NBA. And I was like, oh, my homeboy told me about this guy in high school. Kevin Love was a big boy. Fantastic. That dude, dude was crazy. Kevin Love doesn't get a lot of credit for his passing, but he was a very smart passer. He wasn't like a Nikola Jokic hub or like some of these other players where their primary responsibility is to pass the ball. But given certain defensive schemes and reacting to certain defenses, uh, he could put the ball exactly where it, where it needed to be in the right player's hand, especially when being faced with a double team. Kevin Love was great at that. Kevin Love was phenomenal, man. And then on the offensive end, he could he could he could hit you from anywhere. He had great footwork. He could dribble the basketball. He could catch and shoot, set screens, roll, pick, pop, whatever. Put the ball on the floor, take it to the rim, and 
playing center or power forward, he could stretch the defense out to the three-point line and give you buckets from three. There were a handful of years where he shot over 40% from three-point land. Kevin Love's abilities really open up offensive opportunities for an entire ball club. And that doesn't get mentioned for the type of um, options he presented and opened up for the Cleveland Cavaliers when he got there. We got he, Kevin Love. Remember, it was him or Blake Griffin. Them and Blake Griffin. Him or Blake Griffin during that time. And the majority of the people always went with Blake Griffin. Oh, he can pass the ball. Oh, he's on every highlight reel with the dunks. I said, any given day, any time, whatever, I'm taking Kevin Love over Blake Griffin. I don't care how many of y'all are mesmerized by Sports Center Top 10. I don't care. Kevin Love, to me, is the better basketball player, and I'm taking Kevin Love. Depending on when you started watching basketball, when you hear the Kevin Love, you might think of the floor-stretching big man that played alongside LeBron James on the Cavs. And while that was certainly a good NBA player, as he was still an all-star caliber guy, if that's the only version of him that you are aware of, then you are missing out, because... Let's just say that Cavs Kevin Love pales in comparison to what he was in his prime on the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is going to be kicking off a new series that me and Alex are going to be doing, presuming that it does well. This is going to be a series where me and Alex look back at some of the more forgotten primes in NBA history. You know, the title speaks for itself. But a player who was really good at one point, but nobody really talks about anymore, and we're going to be launching the series, of course, with Kevin Love. So let's get into it. Before we get into this video, if you end up enjoying this video, please be sure to drop a like. And more, please be sure to drop a like if you want to see more of this Forgotten Prime series. I need the video to do well enough that it can justify becoming a series. Oftentimes series don't really hit like that. So if this concept sounds interesting to you and you're really trying to see more of it, seriously drop a like. And also, of course, subscribe to me and subscribe to Alex, who does basically most of this video himself. Uh, and he has more stuff like it over on his channel. But with that said, I'm gonna hand the mic off to him and stop talking about the YouTube channel and start talking about Kevin Love. So let's do that now. Before we dive into the meat of things with Kevin Love, it's important to set a precedent for what exactly Kevin Love's prime was. So we're gonna just look at the stretch from the 2011 season to the 2014 season, which in my opinion is a fairly safe estimate of what a lot of people would consider the prime years of his career. Now, over the stretch of these four seasons, Kevin Love averaged 23 and a half points, 13.7 rebounds, three assists, and he did this all on 57 and a half percent true shooting, which was 3.9 percentage points better than league average true shooting over this stretch. Even more impressive was that he shot 37% from three on 4.9 attempts per game. Only two players in the history of the NBA have shot 37% from three on more than four attempts per game while grabbing 10 or more rebounds per game in a single season. Those two players are Kevin Love and Carl Anthony Towns. Kevin Love was the appetizer preceding the explosion of the stretch four position. Obviously, you have guys like Dirk and Richard Lewis who played the role of stretch four, but Kevin Love was sort of the guy that popped up and proved the viability of the position league wide. We've gotten a little used to the slimmer current version of Kevin Love, but he used to be a really bulky forward yes. and he put that size to great use, especially in the rebounding department. He was the rebounding champion in 2011, securing an absurd 15.2 rebounds per game. You gotta realize something. Kevin Love isn't some seven foot power forward or even a six foot 10 power forward. Kevin Love is only six foot eight. There was a six foot eight guy out there in 2011 grabbing 15.2 rebounds per game. The thing that allowed Kevin Love to grab so many rebounds on a nightly basis was just how big of a player he was, not necessarily in terms of height, but in terms of sheer mass. 
He had what you could call Charles Barkley syndrome, where a player that's undersized relative to other big men is able to grab a crazy amount of rebounds just due to their sheer bulkiness and strength. The rebounding played into another huge aspect of his game, and if you're someone who actually saw Kevin Love in his prime, then you know exactly what I'm referring to, and what I'm referring to is his touchdown passes. We might be a little numb to it now with guys like Jokic and Giannis consistently throwing these touchdown passes as big men, but Kevin Love was doing it before anybody else was, really. Kevin Love's transition passing ability was insanely ahead of its time. The way he would just come down with a rebound and immediately be able to see an open man on the complete other side of the court didn't even seem real at times. We've become really used to these kinds of pass- Larry Bird did that the best, like hands down. Passes because they're so commonplace in today's NBA. But back then, it really wasn't something that you saw a whole lot on a nightly basis. This aspect of his game made the lives of his teammates so much easier, knowing that the second Kevin Love got the rebound, all they had to do was sprint down the court as fast as possible, and Kevin Love was probably going to find them. The amount of processing speed that he exhibited on these types of plays isn't just impressive for a big man, it's impressive for any position, including guards. In the 2013-14 season, the Timberwolves recorded the 8th best transition offense in the NBA, and this was due in large part to Kevin Love love being able to fire literal touchdown passes across the court for quick, easy points. A guy like Corey Brewer was able to feast off of these passes from Kevin Love. Outside of these touchdown pass highlights, he also was just a pretty decent passer overall. While the three assists per game on average might not necessarily leap off of the stat sheet to you, he has had pretty high assist seasons, like up to five before for one thing. Uh, and more importantly, uh, I think that's more to do with the quality of his teammates than anything else because he would constantly find them for open looks and it would consistently be Ricky Rubio or Ronnie Brewer shooting those threes. Anyways, big men operating as playmakers within the offense has become more and more commonplace as the game has come along, but Kevin Love was honestly a revolutionary in it. Love was your prototypical post playmaking hub, being adept at initiating dribble handoffs, using his post gravity to draw in help and double teams, allowing his teammates to make easy cuts to the basket for him to find them in stride. That floor vision that was on display in his transition passing is evident in the half court as well. He would so often orchestrate give and goes to perfection. He wasn't exactly a point forward by today's standards, but when you look at guys like Jokic, Cat, and even guys like Robert Williams, who do a lot of passing out of the elbow and in the high post, Love is a guy that stands out as ahead of his time and how he was able to use the defensive attention garnered by a capable post-scoring big man to generate easy opportunities for his teammates. Shabazz Muhammad is going to bring the ball up and Kevin Love is posting up here. Muhammad is going to give it to him and Kevin Love is going to thread the pocket pass to him on the cut perfectly for Muhammad to get an easy look at the basket. It opened up a lot of perimeter opportunities as well and when defenses collapsed on him to try and prevent him from posting up on a mismatch, he was pretty much always able to find the open man on the perimeter for knockdown catch and shoot threes. On this play here, he's going to drive out of the post up and he actually fakes the dump off pass back to the paint, but instead he's going to change midair after misdirecting the defense and sling it to the corner for a catch and shoot three. It's funny how similar Carl Anthony Towns is to him in this regard because Love was used a ton as an offensive hub as a big man. It's something that Carl Anthony Towns has integrated more and more into his game over time. Now, you cannot talk about Kevin Love without talking about his perimeter shooting ability because it was one of his best abilities. While it would be easy to look back and view him as a catch and shoot guy, he was actually quite underrated as a creator on the perimeter. He had this one thing that he loved to do to create consistent three point looks for himself, and it's so simple, but he would go to it over and over again, and teams would fall for it every time. He would fake as if he was going into a dribble handoff, and then when the defense commits to guarding the action, or when they try to go under the screen, he would step into space with the ball in his hands and just pull the shot. This move tricked defenses constantly, and it was his bread and butter for generating a ton of easy looks from the perimeter that weren't just shots off the catch. 
He could create for himself shockingly well for a guy of his size in this era, but that size played to his advantage. He could use that extra weight to push guys back as if he was driving or initiating a post up, and then just using the space created from that little shove to step back into an open three. Kevin Love was an elite three-point shooter during the 2013-14 season, regardless of position. He was one of only six players in the NBA to shoot over 36% from three on more than six and a half attempts per game. The other players on that list, Ryan Anderson, James Harden, Damian Lillard, Klay Thompson, and Steph Curry. Kevin Love wasn't just an elite perimeter threat though. He was also one of the better post-up big men in the NBA. Like he does with all other areas of the game, when he's posting up, he uses that size to his advantage in the post really well, bullying guys to give himself good angles to get a shot off at the basket. He also had this really nice push shot, baby hook type of thing that he would go to frequently. And it's one of those shots that's just unguardable, especially when it's coming out of the hands of Kevin Love. He was a full package on offense and he fits the mold for what NBA teams salivate for in a modern forward slash small ball center. Kevin Love is primarily going to be remembered in retrospect for what he did with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And he did that because it was when he won a championship, it's when he played with LeBron, so therefore had the biggest spotlight on him, and it's the most recent thing in our memories, which factors in quite a bit. But when Kevin Love was on the Timberwolves, there were very few big men that you could argue were as well-rounded offensively, and very few who could hold a candle to his rebounding ability, especially at his size. His prime averages of 23 points and nearly 14 rebounds while being one of the best shooters in the NBA is not something that should be forgotten. It was truly special. I said everything I had to say in the beginning. Rusty said everything he had to say. You now understand Kevin Love and how great he was before LeBron James and the sacrifices that he made on his career to win a championship and ultimately not really get much credit for it these days. Sad. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I catch you on the next one. We out, baby.